Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in this series and to my channel. Uh, in the previous episodes, we have covered um, and kind of discussed the MVVM architecture that Google pushes for, and we've basically uplifted our app, app to work um, on that entirely. The last little bit that I want to uh, show you here is for uh, or is communication going the other way and what I mean by that uh, as soon as this loads I will show you okay so we're up and running here um, this list here is fueled by the data that's in the live data and then or sorry in the repository uh, the view model and then when we click on a specific uh, attraction, we go ahead and set the particular attraction to the, uh, this live data, which our detail fragment is observing, and then we populate the screen you know, because of that. Uh, we have this little option here where we can click on the little balloon or you know, whatever that uh, location icon thing is, and we bounce the user out to a Google Maps view uh, with this, um, you know, whatever attraction that they had that they were viewing, you know, kind of zoomed into that location here. Uh, we're doing this in the on options item selected because this is a menu item. So this fragment is listening to this um, this particular click of uh, the menu. And so although this works, you know, as intended, and I clearly just showed you how it works, um, there. You could think that uh, the fragment is not the right location to be taking control of this kind of navigation here, uh, especially because we're using an intent and we're bouncing the user to a new um, location and kind of navigating them outside of our app. You could argue that the activity is supposed to handle that kind of navigation. Um, at the end of the day, it's not going to change the actual performance or the actual um, uh, anything to the user, but under the hood, it's usually a good idea to bubble up events um, as high as you can and pass down data as low as you can. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be bubbling up this uh, action, this click here, and we're going to do so, or we're going to bubble it up all the way to the activity level. So we don't need the repository, we don't need that other fragment, we don't need the nav graph, this is all that we need. So we're going to go ahead and create another fragment, or sorry, another uh, live data here. And so let's say uh, location selected live data is going to be a mutable live data of the attraction dot location, right? Because this all of this stuff works off of the attraction location to get the latitude and longitude. We actually need the title here, so let's just go ahead and say attraction. Uh, so, pretty straightforward here. We can just get the activity view model and say location selected, uh, post value, this attraction. So that kind of simplifies this implementation here. You can see at the detail fragment, right? We get the attraction that's in our live data and we post it to a new live data. So, you know, you could use the same live data if you really wanted to, but um, separation of concerns again. So we will, uh, we will keep that, uh, I guess, duplicated in this sense. So location selected live data. We're going to observe this live data in this live data here at the activity level. Just going to go ahead and rename our variable that gets passed in and paste the code here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and now all, all is good, right? I mean, it should be the same implementation, no big deal. So let us, uh, again, in on create, we're going to initialize the view model and then we're going to listen to this particular thing. Okay, so we're up and running here. We'll click on Zadar and then we'll click on this little balloon. And you see nothing changed really under the hood, or sorry, nothing changed, you know, to you, to the user. Um, the only thing that really changed was the location that this kind of stuff was, 
happening, you know, where the code was running. Um, and then if we back up and whatnot, we're all we're all good. We're back inside the app, and we can go ahead and you know just continue this. Uh, and just to prove to you that this is uh, you know happening here, we will go ahead and um, hit our breakpoint, and you can clear clearly see here that our intent that is uh, you know that we've built here, the action view, we're looking for the maps package and we have this URI query here um, is clearly happening at the activity level. And so this is a way that you can communicate from the fragment out to uh, Google. <laughs> Google Maps taking a little while, I was gonna say, that's not, uh, that's not split, that is most definitely New York City, um, but uh, hopefully you can kind of see here now how you can communicate from a fragment up to the activity level in this like event driven stream if you will right so again just furthering the concept that uh, you know a little bit of separation of concerns you know it's not the detail fragments job to do the navigation it's just the details fragments job to uh, handle the user interaction and then basically pass that up to someone whose job it actually is to manage that. So um, I think that this is, uh, hopefully should be making a little bit more sense, right? And then this observer here, this block of code, the only responsibility is that when it is fired that we then build our intent and launch the user, right? So whether or not the implementation of the live data or posting to the live data is as simple as this one line, or if we were to call a new function in the attraction view model and we were to do a whole bunch of different things and then we were to post the, um, the, the, the attraction to this particular live data, uh, you know, the, the observer here in the main activity doesn't really care about anything. It just says, well, when I have something new here, that means that I should do this and, and that's it, right? So hopefully it kind of can simplify your uh, thinking, if you will, if you start to think in this, um, you know, this event driven chain, this subscriber observer pattern, or really, you know, that you could just have a single live data to control all the different aspects of the different things they could click on, right? So you could even argue the same thing here when they click these two facts button instead of, um, having this uh, on this click listener of this text view build this thing you could do build the dialogue you could do the exact same thing where we added a whole new um, you know a whole new live data it was observed in the activity level and that basically runs this code to just uh, you know display the dialogue as it should uh, so you know, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because it would basically just be duplicating exactly what we've just done so far but, um, you know, it's another thing, an another way you can kind of think of things. So um, just as another example here. But uh, considering we have communicated data um, from the activity or, you know, from the view, view model that's scoped to the activity, we have it here for this home fragment. We have it here, the selected one for this uh, selected details. Uh, fragment. We've also gone over a little bit of providing a delay and how that transitions to a different UI or how that can provide a less than um, expected, I guess you could say, experience for the user. Uh, and now we've communicated from the fragment level up to the activity all through this view model here. Um, hopefully you can kind of, or hopefully this rounds out your exposure and experience with MVVM. So this, is, this episode is going to conclude the little mini series that we end up doing here uh, with this live data. And I just want to clarify that that means, or that, that doesn't mean that we're not going to use live data or use this architecture anymore. Um, but that does mean that, you know, from this point forward, when I do spin up a, a new view model or a new live data or a new repository or come up with some new business logic and put it in the view model, uh, it's understood that, you know, you have that understanding as to why certain things would be done that way. So, you know, I'll go ahead and um, continue to explain things over the next, you know, 
I don't know, however long I feel is appropriate, but then hopefully it'll just kind of um, become a little bit more understood that uh, the knowledge that you have moving forward. So um, I think the next thing that I would like to do here is cover uh, a very, very powerful extension, if you will, to the recycler view. As you can see here, this just looks fine and, and, it, and it works. And if we had a huge list, it would also work. But we're going to go ahead and cover a third party library by Airbnb um, that I use and have been using for a few years now that basically just takes recycler views to the next level. So if that is of interest to you, we're going to go ahead and start another mini series in this uh, season because we already have this app up and running and it just makes sense to transition this recycler view over to the uh, Airbnb implementation. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that if it, well, that is exciting actually. This is probably one of the most powerful libraries out there. So uh, I would definitely recommend, you know, subscribing so that you don't miss out. Um, and I look forward to catching you in the next one where we're going to go ahead and dive into a, um, a fantastic library to make our lives a little easier. So I'll catch you there. Thanks for watching.